Hello everyone! Welcome back to our YouTube channel. This is Sir Chad, your Math Along and Mentor. Our topic for today is about modeling, representing, and transforming quadratic functions. Bago tayo mag-start, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell icon upang maging updated kayo sa mga videos na ina-upload ko. So wag na natin patagalin, let's start! Okay, tulad na sinabi ko kanina, ang ating topic is about modeling, representing, and transforming quadratic functions. So first, kailangan muna nating ma-determine kung ang isang given mathematical expression is a quadratic function or not. Let's first have an example and let us determine if the given function is a quadratic function or not. So for example, f of x is equal to 8x plus 5. As you can see here, hindi na siya equal to 0. Meron na siyang f of x. Always remember that f of x can be also represented as y. So, matinatawag na siyang quadratic or not a quadratic function. Kailangan natin ma-determine, is it a quadratic function or not? What is the highest exponent of x? As you can see here, ang highest ng exponent ng x is 1. So, quadratic, ibig sabihin, kapag quadratic, kailangan ang highest exponent is 2. Therefore, Number 1 is not a quadratic function. Okay, let's have an another example. So given the function f of x is equal to x squared plus 4x plus 4, first thing that we must think is what is the highest exponent of the given function. Is it 1? Is it 2? Is it 3? Is it 4 or any number? So as you can see here, the highest exponent of x is 2. And a function is quadratic if the highest exponent of the given function is 2. Therefore, the sample number 2 is a quadratic function. Okay. Ngayon, marunong na tayo mag-identify kung ang isang given function is a quadratic function or not. Now, we will try to graph a quadratic function. And kailangan natin makita kung ano bang itsura ng isang graph ng given quadratic function. Of course, for better understanding, kailangan mayroon tayong example. Given the quadratic function f of x is equal to x squared plus 6x plus 8, kailangan natin siyang i-graph. And how will we graph the given function is using the table of values. So, kakaroon tayo ng value ng x and value ni f of x. Or, pwede siyang tawagin y tulad na sinabi ko kanina. So, pwede tayo magkabalan ng x na negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, and negative 1. How will we find the value of f of x if x is negative 5? Of course, by substituting. f of x is equal to x squared plus 6x plus 8. By substitu substituting negative 5, so negative 5 squared plus 6x or 6 times negative 5 plus 8. Negative 5 squared is 25. 6 times negative 5 is negative 30 plus 8. Therefore, f of x is equals to 25 minus 30 is negative 5 plus 8. It is positive 3. So first, the value ng f of x is 3. So next, ganun lang ulit yung process. So, substitute natin ang value ng x kapag negative 4. So, x squared plus 4x, no, 6x plus 8. If the value of x is negative 4 squared plus 6 times negative 4 plus 8. Negative 4 squared is 16. 6 times negative 4 is negative 24 plus 8. Negative, uh, 16 minus 24 is negative 8. So plus 8, it is 0. Therefore, f of x will be 0 if x is negative 4. Next one. What will be the value of f of x if x is negative 3? So same process lang. Substitute, substitute lang tayo na value na x. So x will be negative 3 squared plus 6 
times negative 3 plus 8. Negative 3 squared is 9. 6 times negative 3 is negative 18 plus 8. 9 minus 18 is negative 9 plus 8. It will be negative 1. Therefore, f of x is negative 1 when x is negative 3. Next, what will be the value of f of x if x will be negative 2? So, negative 2 squared plus 6 times negative 2 plus 8. Negative 2 squared is 4. 6 times negative 2 is negative 12 plus 8. 4 minus 12 is negative 8 plus 8. It will be 0. Therefore, f of x will be 0 when x is negative 2. Next, what will be the value of f of x if x will be negative 1? So, negative 1 squared plus 6 times negative 1 plus 8. Negative 1 squared is 1. 6 times negative 1 is negative 6 plus 8. 1 minus 6 is negative 5 plus 8, so it will be 3. Therefore, f of x is 3 when the value of x is 1, negative 1. Okay, after completing the table of values, so sila yung gagamitin natin sa pagkagraph natin sa given quadratic function. So we will have a Cartesian plane. Two hours later. Let us plot the points from the given or from what we have here in the table of values. So negative 5, 3. So x though is negative 5. And then yung value ni f of x is 3. So 1, 2, 3. So therefore, narito yung ating point. Next, negative 4, 0. So negative 4 and then 0. So this will be negative 4, 0. Negative 3, negative 1. Negative 3, negative 1. Next one, negative 2, 0. Negative 2, 0. And negative 1, 3. So negative 1, 3. So i-coconnect natin yung lahat ng mga points. So as you can see here, meron tayong na-generate na shape. And this shape is what we call the parabola. Parabola is the graph of a given quadratic function. Any quadratic function will be generating a parabola graph. So take note, meron tayong dalawang bagay na kailangan maalala. So ang standard form ng isang quadratic function is f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c where a, b, and c are all real numbers and a must not be equal to 0. Kasi kapag nag-0 si a, ibig sabihin, wala na tayong x squared. Therefore, it will not be a quadratic function. f of x can be also represented as y. So, it will be y is equals to ax squared plus bx plus c. So, another thing, graph of a quadratic function will be always a parabola. So, ang graph ng isang quadratic function will always be a parabola. Wag na wag kakalimutan na parabola ang graph ng quadratic function. So, nakita nyo naman kanina kung anong hitsura ng isang parabola. Okay. Tulad ng sinabi ko kanina, ang ating standard form for a quadratic function is f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c or it can be represented as y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. This standard form can be converted into what we call vertex form. So, ang vertex form 
is y is equal to a times the quantity x minus h quantity squared plus k. This is what we call a vertex form. We can have this from the given quadratic function. And para mas maintindihan natin, of course, magkakaroon tayo ng examples. Given the function y is equal to x squared minus 6x minus 3. So, hanapin natin or convert natin siya into a vertex form. First step, kailangan alam natin kung sino yung may mga x. So, ipagsamasamahin natin siya inside a parenthesis x squared minus 6x meron siyang silang x so minus 3. Iwan natin yung walang x. Next one, kailangan ang equation inside the parenthesis must become a perfect square trinomial. Paano natin magagawang perfect square trinomial ang binomial sa loob ng parenthesis? So, we will be using completing the square. So, paano nga ba ang completing the square? So, magkakaroon tayo ng plus dito, minus 3, minus kung ano man yung ilalagay natin dito. So, kung ano nilagay natin dito, ima-minus natin dito. How will we find this value? So, sulat natin siya as uh, unknown or question mark. So, paano natin makukuha itong nasa question mark? So, Siya yung C dito sa given equation. So, C is equal to B over 2 quantity squared. And saan natin makukuha yung B? So, makukuha natin yung B dito sa given equation. So, anong value ni B dito sa equation na to? So, B is negative 6. So, negative 6 over 2 quantity squared. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3 squared. So, Negative 3 squared is 9. So, ito yung susulat natin dito sa question mark. So, it will be 9. So, dito, magkakaroon ulit tayo ng 9. Don't forget, kung ano ang pinalas nyo dito sa loob ng parenthesis, ima-minus nyo naman siya dito sa nasa labas ng parenthesis. Next one will be the factoring of the given quadratic function or quadratic equation here. x squared minus 6x plus 9. This given trinomial is a perfect square trinomial. Therefore, its factor will be square root of the first term, square root of the last term, which is, what is the square root of 9? So, it is 3. And copy the sign of the middle term, which is negative 6x. So, it will be negative. So, meron tayong square. Ito na ngayon yung factor ni x squared minus 6x plus 9. Negative 3 minus 9 is negative 12. As you can see here, nandito na tayo ngayon sa ating vec vertex form which is y is equal to a times x minus h quantity squared plus k. So, tatanungin nyo, sir, ano yung value ni a? So, ang value ni a is 1. Nasaan si 1? So, si 1 nasa dito sa labas. Hindi nyo lang siya nakikita. Dahil madalas, hindi natin sinusulat si 1. Then, what is the value of h? So, the value of h here, from what we get from the vertex 4, is 3. So, bakit hindi negative 3? Kasi, minus, minus, so h, h is 3. And what is k? k is negative 12. So, bakit siya kasama yung minus? Kasi, plus 2 dito, so, kasama dapat siya yung negative kasi iba yung sign. Therefore, the vertex form of the quadratic function y is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 3 will be x minus 3 quantity squared minus 12. So, this is its vertex form. That's all for today everyone. So tips lang or mga notes na kailangan nyo matandaan. Always remember that the standard form of a quadratic function will be given as f of x or y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. From this given function or equation, it can be converted into a vertex form represented by f of x is equal to a times the quantity x minus h 
quantity squared plus k. Always remember also that the graph of a quadratic function is always a parabola. It cannot be a straight line or any other graphs. That will be the end of our discussion for today, everyone. I hope that this video helps you to understand more about modeling, representing, and transforming quadratic function. Don't forget to hit the like button or comment ka yung comments, suggestion, and clarification. Don't forget to write it in the comment section. Also, you can directly message me on my Facebook page. The link will be on the description below. Again, this is Sir Chad, your math and mentor. See you on our next discussion. Thank you and goodbye.